Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I got you a VFC MP7 that I worked on in a previous video. And this guy is back for not only just a tuna, but also to figure out why this thing isn't feeding right. So I'm gonna get this thing all torn apart, I'm gonna open it up and see what's going on. But before we do, I'm gonna go ahead and cycle it because he said he's make some ugly noises. So let's see what she sounds like. Oh, she's jammed. So, yeah, I think that's the first thing we're gonna check is the, see if the barrel's clear. But I do see that the nozzles are trickling back and forth, and he did say that it wasn't, or something like that. And I can clearly see that the BB is stuck right in there in the chamber, and I think the hollow's turned up too high. So let's take a look at that. Got the gearbox out of the MP7. Off camera, I found out real quick, got a BB stuck in that chamber, and it's, I mean, it's really stuck in there. And I'm pretty sure it's because the bucking is torn to shreds in this guy. And one reason that I believe that is because when I took this all apart, this hop-up was almost turned up all the way. And it makes me wonder if it was kept being fired while the hop-up was maxed out for whatever reason. It's a common mistake, so I totally get that. Even I would make a mistake like that. But I'm going to tear this thing apart. I'm first going to see what is blocking that BB. I'm going to get inside that barrel, clean it real good, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up the gearbox and just check the internals, make sure there's nothing damaged. So if you want to check out the previous video of this build, I'll leave a carver up here in the upper right corner. For right now, I'm going to get this open and uh, check some things out. Got the hop-up out and the gearbox out of the apparatus here. And I'll tell you what. This thing jammed up real good. Before I pulled the barrel out, I looked down the chamber and it looked uh, that the bucking collapsed. So I'm gonna look at this together. I only pulled it out this far before I started recording. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happened to it. Ooh, there, we, yep, there it is. The bucking's done. And because it jammed and it's been shot multiple times while it was jammed, I'm gonna open up the gearbox and inspect the internals, make sure there's no damage to the internal parts. And then uh, put it all back together and see if she shoots. Yeah, they're gonna go with a different bucking this time. I think this was a little too soft and I think that's why this bucking tore. Cause it had to have folded over and the BB tried to pull it down the barrel with it and then the multiple shots probably finished it off. But yep, <gasps> garbage. Boom, got the gearbox open. So first things first, the first thing I noticed right out the bat when I got it all apart is that we got some debris of BB particulates inside the cylinder. But the inside the cylinder is perfectly fine. Just got to clean it clean it out, which I'm going to do. Uh, same with the piston head. There's a little bit of crud on the piston head. And I just got to wipe it clean, clean it up real good. Same with the cylinder head. There's no damage. Just need to clean all that up. Gears, surprisingly, are perfectly fine. There's no damage to be found whatsoever. As you can see. Heck, even the chip for the tappet plate is perfectly fine. And, of course, your bevel. No broken teeth. No excessive wear. And then even the pinion gear on the, the motor is perfectly fine, too. So on this build, if you've seen the previous video on this, we used a Bulgear tappet plate. And I have to say that these hold really well and work really well. They hold the nozzle nice and tight. And seeing that this thing's been used heavily, we only got a little bit of wear marks on the tappet plate where it was anodized. That's it. So if you want to get one of these, let me know. Uh, I do sell them on my website. If you have an MP7, I highly recommend using one of these over the plastic ones because the plastic ones are notorious for snapping. We did, however, have one casualty. You see those little nicks right there? That'll cause FPS consistency and tear into the bucking. This is a Payrun two-piece nozzle. So I'm gonna unscrew this top and clean that up on my lathe and see if it will work. And since this is adjustable, I'll just compensate for whatever material I'll cut off and should be good to go. Done. Look at that. Good as new. 
the power of the lathe, man. Reset the length on the nozzle here, and I use some Loctite with the Severs Prep, and this is glued in. It's it's like it's super glued in. It's it, it's solid now. Uh, cleaned the cylinder head as well as the cylinder. Put some new grease in there. Uh, cleaned the piston head. As you can see, it looks like brand new again. Reshimmed the gearbox. It's good to go. Real smooth. Got maximum contact between the bevel and the pinion gear on the motor. Additionally, I did some electrical work. Simply, I just took this little piece right here. Uh, this guy right here is what I did the modification on. I uh, took out the wiring for the mag cutoff where you have to have the magazine plugged in for this gun to fire. And I closed the loop. So now the magazine doesn't need to be in for this MP72 cycle. This guy right here was the original wiring that I also bypassed for when the magazine runs empty. In these MP7s, the electrical for those features are unreliable and cause issues like for this customer and he requested me to disable that. And this one's obviously for your trigger connected to this micro switch right here. So when you pull your trigger right in front of my knuckle right there, that gets pressed and the uh, airsoft gun fires. So it's all bypass now. So when he pulls the trigger, it will fire no matter if the magazine's empty or even in the rifle period. So so moving our attention to the hop-up unit and the barrel assembly. One complaint that I always hear with these VFC MP7s is that they like to shoot off to one side constantly. And here's why. These MP7 hop-up arms, they don't really hop very straight. When you apply the hop-up, what happens is this hop-up arm, say that my hand's a hop-up arm, it will start to tilt as you apply more and more hop-up. And to show you what I mean, I'm, I'm going to turn up the hop-up and we'll look down the barrel together and I'll show you. So this is exaggerated to show you what I mean. But you can see that that bucking is tilting to the left a little bit. It's tilted this way. And that's because... The hop-up arm is made out of plastic, and over time, the axle hole on this hop-up arm starts to get all whacked out. And not only that, but the, out of the factory, they're, they're like that anyway. So to rectify this problem, we are going to put a metal one in. This hop-up arm is made from GSI. I sell these on my website, which tech.com if you want to get yourself one. They come with a maple leaf omega nub that fits nice and snug in that little opening right there and if you look closely you can see that it has a curve to it right on top and it mimics the curvature of the top of the bb so when you use a hop-up bucking that has something similar to that like the one you just seen in that hop-up which by the way is called a bugatti fly 5 bucking that i'm testing in this mp7 it's supposed to help with accuracy and speaking of accuracy, since this is a metal hop-up arm, it's going to be a lot more rigid. So there's going to be less flex, in both uh, when the BB passes through, through the bucking, and it won't twist. So the shots are going to be perfectly straight as the user of this MP7 fires. I'm going to install this on this guy, and I'm going to show you the difference. Here's before, and here's after. Look how perfectly centered that is now. And it looks nice. That combination, oh man, this thing is going to shoot so straight now. Can't wait to test it myself. If you want to get yourself one of these, I'll leave uh, links in the description below for this hop-up arm if you want to get it for your MP7. And it only works in the VFC MP7 AEG. It does not work with the gas guns. Okay, so I got the gearbox all back together. But other than that, I didn't see anything wrong with the internals whatsoever. Uh, the piston that we replaced in the last video, perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it. Hasn't done any premature engagement whatsoever. Still running the factory bearings, no issues there. The tappet plate, good shape. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the whole MP7 back together, and uh, we'll get to chronoing. Man, back to the bench. Uh, so off camera, I went ahead and got the whole MP7 together, get it all nice and ready and then I chronoed it and it was a little bit wacky and definitely below what it used to be and I felt like there was something that wasn't right and you can notice that I put a different nozzle in. We're back to the EPES nozzle because the pay run broke and if you notice that little 
curve in there that's smashed in. I have a theory of why that happened. This damn thing. Stick it up just high enough for that nozzle to run into it. So if I hold the hop up all the way down to where that follower is all the way in the chamber, you can tell when that little magnet end of it is all the way in. You can see it through that little window. You can see that the follower is up into the chamber a bit, which is more than enough for that nozzle to come forward and hit it. And being that we have a metal tab plate in here and a cam that really shoves this thing forward, I'm willing to bet that all that rigidity and this follower coming up high enough, and it makes the original VFC nozzle from the previous video and this nozzle get damaged right here. So to fix this, I'm going to get rid of this two-piece follower setup and convert it to a one-piece to prevent that damage from happening. Additionally, I'm also going to make sure that this nozzle is not too long or too short by test firing in the chrono. So this is literally how I put the MP7 together to test fire it with BBs and make sure it cycles right. So I'm going to have it in this orientation completely out of the shell exactly like this when I go to chrono it. That way if there's a problem I don't have to slide this whole thing back out of the receiver again. Here we go, we'll see what she gets. Alright, I'm going to just mag dump it. I think we're, uh, we're good to go. So I'm going to put this together and go from there. So before we move on from the chrono, I really liked how those results came in. This right here is called your trigger transfer bar. And I broke one of these right here because I was trying to get it bent in the right spot because I was having issues of this thing firing when you pulled the trigger at the right moment and the semi wasn't working right and whatnot. And it had to do with the, this right here being at the correct angle. When I was trying to bend it, I ended up bending it too far and I snapped it. And what I'm getting at is that I had to order a new one of these and it was a pain in the butt. But uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Amped Airsoft and Evic getting with me and working with me on getting a new one of these. So now I have a couple of these in stock now just in case this ever happens again. I have them. But anyways, this guy sits right in here just like that. When you pull the trigger, which your trigger sits right in here, pulls on this this way. Then this guy rotates and hits that micro switch right there. And that's what makes this MP7 AAG fire. A few other things to show you guys what I did to this guy. If you notice here, the two terminations. These two were for your mag cutoff and your uh, bolt release cutoff. And I disabled those because uh, they're unreliable and they cause nothing but issues in terms of reliability of these MP7s working. So I talked to the customer about it and we ended up just just disabling it completely so that he could just throw in his mag and the thing will fire because in the past even when this thing was brand new he had issues of this thing not firing all because the lever wouldn't be set right or what have you it wasn't hitting the micro switch that was right here now this is going to make it much more reliable and less issues additionally we also put the pay run ab plus plus in this thing in a while ago and i did a rewiring because the wiring on the Payron is a very soft material, the silicon coating. So I wrapped it around with the shrink wrap to make it more durable. And if you guys are interested in having your MP7 that needs work on, or you want to do some upgrades, make it more reliable, what have you, I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and throw this the rest of the way together and crown it again and make sure this thing is going to work right. Okay, got it all back together. So something I want to tell you guys while I was off camera, I was actually struggling with the trigger mechanism in this thing and semi-auto doing like a two or three round burst. And I found out that it was because there was a piece behind this selector switch right here. It was like a little rocker thing. But anyways, it was slightly damaged in such a way that it was causing it to have those issues. Well, I fixed it and those issues vanished. I... Uh, Sorry I didn't get it on camera so I could have showed you guys. I wasn't thinking. I was just like in the zone putting this thing together and I just wanted to get it working. But I digress. So I'm going to show you guys how this thing shoots in the chrono and you can give me your opinions down in the comments. Okay, so I got a 11.1 LiPo in this thing. This is uh, what it is. 11.1, 30C, 1500mAh battery. And I got 
0.2 gram BBs in the mag. So here we go. We're going to start off with semi with 10 shots. Not bad, not bad. All right, let's do full auto and see how she does. Woohoo! All right. Let me know what you guys think of the results down in the comments. Alrighty, tidy. So let's head back to the bench and uh, I'm going to share some thoughts over this build. Okay, just to sum things up in this video. Off camera, I did test various weight of BBs. I did 0 0.28, 0.32s, and even 4Ls just for fun. And uh, I'll tell you this right now, uh, it shoots the 3.2s the best. Uh, the jewels and the FPS rose up a little bit and the FPS got more consistent. And then when I went to the 4Ls, it barely lost any jewels which tells me that this thing could even shoot 4-0 surprisingly with that out of the way guys thanks for watching the video i appreciate you guys support if you have any questions about the vfc mp7 generation 2 leave down in the comments below i also leave a link down below if you need yours worked on by yours truly which take airsoft with that out of the way you guys stay safe and i'll see you on the next one